Do you have good audio for the, uh, you want to do a preview for the audio and make sure? All right, cool. All right, so first of all, I have a question for everybody. How many people have seen me present before? Yeah, I, I don't do a whole lot with slides. Like, you're not going to have anything that you can write down for my slides and be like, wow, that's really important. I, I don't read anything. I stand up here and I tell you a story. I'm a storyteller. So my purpose is to introduce you, hopefully, to something new, CTFs, and to actually pique your interest so that you'll out, actually go out to the resources that I'll provide um, that are all basically on one slide uh, at the end. So applying the principles of dodgeball, right, the true underdog story to CTFs, uh, I wrote this presentation almost four weeks ago. And uh, that was actually way too restrictive, so I went ahead and, um, oh, man, my own little, I've defeated myself. I rejected my own talk, right? Um, and the reason is uh, it was too restrictive. Uh, how many people have seen Dodgeball Story? Yeah, so there was like three rules, right? Four, but really three because one of them repeated itself. So I said, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and go with what I know. And I'm a child of the 80s, so you're not going to get just dodgeball, um, um, uh, the dodgeball story and keys to success from that, but from all the movies that inspired me from the 1980s. How many people do I have in here that are, that are born in the 70s or younger? All right. Uh, what about the 80s, born in the 90s? Yeah, so I was actually, I, I teach uh, classes every once in a while, at uh, Marshall University for, for Bill. And um, last time I was there was a couple of years ago, and one of the students came up to me afterwards and said, hey, great presentation. I didn't understand any of your movie references. You need to update movie references. And that's I was like, I'm not going to update my references because this is how I learned. What I need to do is a little bit of awareness and training and get all this younger generation to appreciate the movies that came out in 1980 or the 80s. Um, so this is kind of the format of my slides. I'm always going to have, I think there's two slides I don't have a picture on. So I'm going to have a picture uh, from a movie. I'm going to have the title of the movie, when it was created or released, and then an inspirational quote or kind of an idea of why I picked that and why it motivated me. So how many people have seen Red Dawn? And I'm not talking about the crappy remake in 2012. Chris Hemsworth, great guy, but come on. 1980s is where it was. So I'll set the scene for you. There's a colonel named Andy Tanner, and he's, he's shot down over occupied uh, America. He makes his way to this group of freedom fighters called the Wolverines, right? And he wants to bring in this tactical influence, and he wants to teach them how to do uh, ambushes and things of that nature. So he's got this big mock-up of this ambush they're going to do. And he simply says, you know, we're, all right, four planes, Cuban bunker, Russian bunker, munitions dump, troop tents. And he goes through all these different movements, right? Things that anybody that spent any time in the military would understand. And he says, anybody got any questions? And the first guy says, yeah, what's a flank? And the second guy says, what's grazing fire? And then he, he just says, you know, I need a drink. So... Um, so this really motivated me to plan. Everything in, in life, if you set goals and you plan, other people may not understand your plan, but at least you will. You have something to judge yourself by. So who am I? Uh, first and foremost, I'm a Christian. I believe in God, family, and country in that order. Spent 20 years in the military. Um, but uh, if you've not watched History of the World Part 1, it has one of the best dialogues uh, ever between Commodus and Jesus. So I encourage you to go out and at least watch that scene. It's the Last Supper scene. It's hilarious. Uh, I actually spent some time in seminary, but that's a different, different presentation. Um, Empire Strikes Back, not Star Wars Episode V. I don't give a crap about what they renamed it, right? Star Wars, or I'm sorry, The Empire Strikes Back. On the original billing, it wasn't the third one. It was just that. Um, so the point of this slide is I am a father. Uh, I have four kids now. We keep collecting kids, adopting them. Um, and I would like to point out that you have to pay attention to detail whenever you're doing CTFs. 
the phrase is not, Luke, I am your father. It's, no, I am your father. So that's one of the most uh, misquoted movie references there is on the internet. All right, next, uh, I started in information security before they called it information security. In 1991, I became a Navy cryptologist. I did everything from pulling wire, putting up fences for physical security, alarm systems, uh, telecommunications engineering, security architecture, uh, infrastructure architect. I've done everything. Uh, one of my favorite stints was actually doing training and awareness, and that's why I put this up there, Tron. Uh, you know, Tron fights for the users. I like to think that I fight for the users. All right, uh, and then the last one, like I said, I was a child of the 80s. I don't know if they still use this phrase anymore, latchkey kids. So whenever I got off the bus every day at school, my parents, neither one of them, got off work for like three more hours. So I basically sat in front of the TV uh, from, you know, kindergarten all the way up to my senior year and watched TV. So movies and especially the show MASH became a major influence on my life. Um, all right. So to get into the subject matter, what is a CTF? Uh, like Stand By Me, where they're going to search for a body, in CTF, you're actually searching for flags. Uh, there's different types of CTFs. Uh, basically, both of them are, are there's two, two main types. Both of them are, are considered uh, uh, games uh, or simulations. Uh, one of them is called... ...style, and that's where you... Or, po or you have questions posed to or scenarios, you go look for the answer and you report the answer back and you get, you get points. Uh, the second one is attack and defense scenarios. Uh, those are usually on a larger scale. Um, they're not always public and the reason is, is the amount of resources it takes for those is just astronomical. Uh, one of the biggest public ones is actually um, at the CTF at uh, DEF CON. So if you ever go to DEF CON and you go into the room, those guys, they don't sleep for 72 hours. Or if they do, it's for minutes at a time, or maybe an hour at a time. Um, so it's pretty cool to watch. But uh, another common one is CCDC. Um, so some of those, most of them are defense related. Some of them you, you get some attack uh, scenarios where you can attack someone else's network. Um, they always invo involve some type of analysis. And then some of them, you have to actually run exploits so that you can get the flag. Um, and then once again, they're educational in nature. The, the purpose is to, to help you learn skills that would be beneficial to you as an InfoSec practitioner. Uh, this is one of my two slides, I think, that doesn't have a picture. Uh, where are they held? Most, most of these are going to be held uh, in person. Almost every conference I've been to in the last, say, five years has had some type of CTF. Uh, even if it's just a, like a crypto challenge, um, an actual CTF like we have here. Um, and then they can vary between different types. Some of them, I, I participated in one at besides Knoxville, where it was half social media challenges, where you didn't even need a computer to, to figure those out. I used my, my phone. Um, and then the other half were really like crypto challenges, uh, exploit executions, things of that nature. And then there's this growing uh, list of online uh, capture the flags. And I actually have a pretty con comprehensive uh, list at the end uh, that's been published by someone else. But it, those are really nice. Right now there's one going on called KringleCon. It's put on by the people that do uh, with Sands Institute. And uh, I've been playing around on that for the last couple of weeks. And uh, it's, it's pretty interesting. So Santa Claus, there's, they always have like a scenario like Santa Claus, uh, you know, somebody uh, hijacks a sleigh or the elves revolt. Or, it's always a pretty intense uh, story that, that goes along with it. Uh, what is a flag? So flags, basically they are the result of performing some type of action. Here's an example of a flag. So I don't know if you know much about GitHub, uh, the repository, but basically in order to do this uh, uh, challenge, 
you um, you basically remote added a package to GitHub, and then you would you would push it to master, and then it would respond with the flag. So some of them we would call that a, a zero level or an introductory level. So it's not really hard. Uh, you could probably Google it and get the answer. Uh, I've actually seen one where uh, on it was a social media challenge, and um, they had basically a flag buried in their um, their Twitter page. So it really can be just about anything. You're usually given some instructions, but not a lot of instructions, and then it's kind of a free-for-all. Uh, another flag, this one's kind of hard to see, but uh, basically you're given a, uh, a subnet or a range of IP addresses, and um, that's it. So what this person did in this instance is they just did a, a ARP scan. Uh, they determined that there were three IP addresses that were active, and then they just ran NMAP against one of them, uh, the 102, which was the last one. I usually pick the first one, but, you know, they picked the last one. Uh, that ended up showing that it had TCP, so port 21. So they actually just opened up a browser, typed in, or sorry, uh, FTP, uh, I don't know why I said TCP. FTP opened up a browser, went to that website using FTP, logged in anonymously, and the flag was there. It was actually a text file called flag.txt. Um, I've seen some where you have to actually take your computer up to the people and say, hey, I found this flag, and then they give you credit for it. Uh, this particular one, you would actually, after you opened up that flag.txt file, there was a link. You would go back onto their intranet and submit the flags. So every flag that they had, you could submit via a submit button. So they could be everything in between. I've seen CTFs that were just uh, physical. I've seen some that uh, at uh, this year's um, uh, DEF CON that was actually a fox hunt. So they had emitters uh, all over DEF CON, and actually people were moving the emitters around. And you had to build, you had like 24 hours to build a device to capture the wireless. Uh, and then you would roam around and um, find these emitters. And every emitter you found, you got a series of points. Uh, based on how little RF transmission there was. So if like it was a very weak signal, uh, they would be worth more points. You got to see some really cool uh, hounds for that. Um, a lot of, some of them would have like actual like old school sonar scopes. So anytime it would, it would uh, pick up on a signal, uh, whenever it was broadcasting, it would put a little ping, and you would walk towards it, and that ping would get closer. Um, and then, uh, let's see. So always have a game plan. Has anybody, this is one of my favorite movies, has anybody ever seen the movie Zero Boys? No, I didn't think so. So this is a classic. Paintball. It started getting big in, in the early 80s. In 1986, the Zero Boys came out. This is a story of three paintball champions that go out into the woods. And um, they actually start fighting for their own lives because they realize quickly it's not a game. right? And the tagline was, the game is no longer a game. right? So it is what you make it, basically. But I, I highly recommend this movie. And one of the reasons is uh, their budget was like $200,000. And they used the scene from uh, 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 Friday the 13th, 1 through 3. So yeah, Kate, uh, uh, Lake Crystal, uh, all the cabins, everything, uh, same exact scenes. Uh, but the purpose of a game plan is you want to make sure you have your outcomes. You determine what your outcomes are. If you're just starting, your outcome may be, I want to meet people. Uh, your outcome may be, I want to get really good at this one tool and my lab's just not doing it for me. Um, have a process. If you have a written process, it's easier to understand where you made your mistakes or where you did well. And then we'll talk a little bit about tools. I'm not going to teach you about tools because there's some really good classes next door that will teach you about tools. I will highlight a couple of them that, that you absolutely have to have. So... Uh, two of my biggest outcomes, number one, I always want to learn something new. Every time I do a CTF, as I'm prepping for it, I'll learn a new tool. Uh, and then my hope is, I used to be a pen tester back in the military. Uh, I, 
we used to say we're pen testers without the test portion. Um, but I've lost a lot of that. Whenever I came out of the military, all the tools we used were proprietary. And I didn't want to do that job anymore. I felt I was weak in governance, risk, and compliance. So I wanted to learn that. And then I, I learned eight years later that once your skills atrophy, it's hard to get back on the other side of the fence. Um, but this is, I mean, come on, Gunnery Sergeant Hartman. Yeah, I remember this guy from Full Metal Jacket. Yeah, intense. I love that dude. He taught me a lot. Uh, the second thing is I always want to meet people. So I use CTFs as an excuse to talk to people. I don't have a hard time talking to people. I'll talk to just about anybody. But once again, it's just one more excuse for me. And then to waste some time. Whenever you go to a conference, you guys are going to be here possibly for three days, right? Sometimes you don't want to sit in this room for another minute. So go out, do lobby con, or go into the CTF room, talk to somebody, say, look, I don't have my computer. Can you just show me what you're doing right here? Uh, a lot of times I'll say, no, get away. Sometimes I'll say, yeah, sure, sit down. And then before you know it, I've had people actually slide their computer over and say, now you run the scan. So it's pretty cool. Uh, the Shining, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. Yeah. So that was that was me wasting some time sitting in the frozen uh, maze, right? Uh, when, once again, I always have a process. In the military, we used to always say, no plan survives first contact with the enemy. Uh, but if you go into contact without a plan, you're surely going to die. So at least have a plan or a process. Have it written. Say, here's how I want to traverse through this network. And then you get the rules, and that may just that may go out the door, right? But some of those things, you'll be able to at least evaluate your plan later and grow from it. Uh, write it down. Uh, and then as I always say, write it down if you're beginning. Uh, as you start to understand your tools and you get familiar with them, uh, you can start freestyling. Or some people call it pivoting. That's really the word. I call it freestyling because I'm a child of the 80s, right? Um, uh, I was a skateboarder for about a week. Uh, whenever you grew up in the country and didn't have any asphalt or, or cement around, it was kind of hard to skateboard on dirt, so I gave that up. Uh, so freestyle. When you go from writing it down to freestyling, I still always tell people to write their stuff down because one of the learning processes for me is I write about what I did during the CTFs. And if I can teach someone else, then I really know my stuff and I can, I can emulate that next time. Anybody seen uh, Gotcha? Came out in 1984, I don't know. Yeah, this is one of my favorite, absolute favorite movies, right? Um, the, my base, my, my favorite scene of the whole movie, and there's, there's some classics there, is this guy, Jonathan, sitting in a French restaurant, and he's looking at the menu. He can't read French. He can't speak French. He's got his little book open. He's trying to translate. And the waiter comes over, and he says, um, Parlez-vous English? And he says, a little. And he says, I want the pernode. And the guy's like, Pernod? And he points at it and says, oh, Pernod. And he's like, yeah, I want Pernod. And then Jonathan comes back and says, Mon crayon es grand et mon crayon es one. And the guy says, your pencil is big and yellow? And he says, absolutely. Get my Pernod. Love that scene. Uh, right after that, it meets the sexy spy. That helps, too. Um, so tools. We'll talk a little bit about tools. And the most important thing you can get from this presentation is going to be the sign. Uh, no shirt, no shoes, no dice from Fast Times at Richmond High. The sign's important, but really what comes after that is Brad, the guy that works in the restaurant where all these guys basically disrobed and he wouldn't serve them. He, we pointed to the sign and he made them read it. And they said, no shirt, no shoes, no dice, right? And Brad says, right. Learn it, know it, live it. So whenever it comes to your tools, learn them, know them, live with those tools. Because I don't know if you're, you know, if you're like me, if I don't use something after a period of time, I, I lose it, right? It's just gone. So simple things like, uh, what are the switches on an MMAP scan? I don't remember all of them, right? I used to be an MMAP beast, but I can't remember half of them now, at least half the ones I used which weren't even all the switches. So 
make sure you pick a tool, you learn the tool, and then you apply the tool at a CTF. Uh, man with two brains. One of the biggest tools you can have is your brain. But it's always better to have two brains. Whenever I do CTFs by myself, I know what my weaknesses are, and I know that there are flags that I could only get by using a tool that I'm not familiar with. So if you have a partner or somebody you can bounce ideas off of, or maybe you're better at this tool set and they're better at that tool set, you can work together. Uh, you'll, I guarantee you'll do a lot better than if you were doing a CTF by yourself. Teams are even better. Um, it, man with two brains, any fans? This was kind of one of those weird ones, wasn't it? Yeah, it was just... The, the only thing I really liked about this movie is... This is one of the few movies growing up where I actually heard my brother cackle. So that's, I, I mean, I still hate the movie. I can't watch it to this day. But you do get some golden, uh, some golden one-liners from, from this movie. What? Well, yeah, I'd be, I'd be normal. <laughs> uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Uh, the second tool that you'll need is uh, some type of computing device. Right? So Ferris Bueller, if you've ever watched this, other than the famous quote, Bueller, Bueller, Bueller. My boyfriend's cousin's ex-girlfriend's sister-in-law's boyfriend said that she saw him at the mall and he was throwing up. I think he's going to die. Right? Is this. I asked for a car. I got a computer. How's that for being born under a bad sign? It's important to... you. It's very... I won't say it's impossible... Uh, because I did CTF at uh, B-Sides Knoxville, I used my Samsung. So my Note 8 uh, actually came in second place. So I'm kind of proud of that. I did have to root it and add some things, <laughs> add some tools. Um, but yeah, I, sometimes I go way overboard. Uh, but it uh, doesn't matter the OS. Uh, sometimes it does, based off of what tools you want to use. But whether it's Windows, Linux, Mac OS, uh, it doesn't really matter. I will tell you that things like um, if you want to run an ARP scan, a simple ARP scan, uh, use Linux because it's built in the command line there. There's no special tools you need, right? Uh, most people don't do ARP scans. They just fire up nmap and, and they'll, they'll use that. I like ARP scan because it's pretty clean and simple and I don't have to fire up any tools for it. Uh, or like I said, uh, even a phone with a browser. Uh, once again, if you're doing the team approach, um, you know, you got to go to the bathroom, you're going to be indisposed for 30 minutes, jump on your phone, see if you can get some of those social flags. Uh, uh, not, not like social, like talking to your neighbor, but social, like social media. Uh, Sam, how many people have Samsungs? Do y'all use the Samsung Internet app? Huh? It is. So on the Note series... Um, it actually, if you just uh, swipe up, do search, Internet, it's going to come up with a big blue circle, right? It's supposed to look like the Earth, but it doesn't. Uh, what I like about that is, number one, it's very light. Uh, Chrome, especially on laptops, uh, but you know, more or somewhat on, on phones, it's a beast, and it will hog your resources. So if you are going to use a... a, a mobile phone for, for some of those things. Do you have it on yours? Blue disk. Just type in an internet. But the cool thing about it is uh, you get a, lo a lot of those annoying pop-ups from Chrome that say, you know, you can't go to this site, it's insecure. Uh, Samsung internet doesn't give a crap about that. It's like, you want to go? You're bad. You do what you want to do. I'm just here to get, you know render pages. Um, other things you need. I never recommend, even at little places like this, using your personal laptop to do CTFs unless you have some type of virtual machine. Um, I don't like adding tools, any tools, uh, Kali, uh, Backbox, anything like that, to my personal laptop where I've got you know, credit card data, uh, anything. College work. It, it doesn't matter. I, I don't like doing it. Uh, both of these are free. Uh, you have Oracle VirtualBox. That's what I use mostly. And then VM, they just change it. VM Workstation Player is what they change it to. Um, they have the free version and then the pro version, which you have to pay for. 
Uh, and then if you have uh, a Mac, you can do, uh, what is it, Parallels? Yeah. Uh, I used to be a big Parallels fan. Not so much anymore. Oh, by the way, uh, whenever it comes to laptops, I usually have two on me. One of them is this, so it's a Dell 1570. Um, kind of an unusual number there. But uh, I love it because it's got an i7 uh, solid state drive. It can crunch anything I throw at it. But to be honest with you, my favorite, I took it upon myself, my wife's uh, Mac 2010 MacBook Pro. Uh, the battery swelled up and busted out the bottom screws. So I replaced the battery for like 30 bucks. Uh, put a solid state, one terabyte solid state drive in it and upgraded the RAM to big old whopping 8 gig. And uh, this thing is a beast. It has handled more. Sometimes if I have like five, six VMs open on this, it kind of starts hiccuping a little bit. This MacBook Pro has never given me an issue. It's like feed me more. Feed me more. So 2010. Love that thing. Uh, but yeah, get one of these tools. Uh, run it in uh, nap mode, not bridge mode. If you run it in bridge mode, it shares resources with your host system. Uh, as NAT device, it, it won't share all those resources uh, to share the hardware, but you can't transfer files. Well, actually, you can if you s click a box, but you can't get from the host system to the VM very easily. Uh, and once again, depending on the environment, this has nothing on it uh, that's personal. I think... Preference, I don't really have a preference. I like both uh, VMware and VirtualBox. And the beauty of, of using these is you can actually download uh, VMs from the internet, like Exploitable or um, uh, it's like really damn vulnerable or something like that. Uh, so you can have your lab up and running in like an hour and have 20, 30 devices that you can start attacking as practice. So that's pretty pretty nice. Uh, Ghostbusters, never cross the streams. Why? Because you could, that would be bad, right? Uh, I always say this because it's probably one of the most powerful tools I've ever seen in my life, right? Uh, I mean, these things, they can just absolutely wreak havoc on ghosts. Um, and Callie's the same way. Callie has over 600 tools currently on it. There's no way you can learn all of those tools. But the reason why I like Cali is because you have over 600 tools. So there's been times where I have been in a CTF, a ShmooCon. Uh, there was a CTF in ShmooCon where one of the flags, you actually had to use a software-defined radio to actually capture, uh, they had like a mini radio tower that was broadcasting throughout the conference. You actually had to... I don't know any other pen testing tool that has an SDR native to it. A lot of them you can load them, but it, it had one. So I was able to fire that up as soon as I, you know, somebody spoke too loud and I realized I was looking in the wrong place, borrowed an antenna from someone, learned how to do SDR on the fly. Uh, didn't get the flag because I suck at that too, but, you know, whatever. So Cali, Cali's the big boy. Um, highly recommend uh, if you're going to use Cali, um, have a good system. You know, if you have like a system with i3 processor, you're going to get some sputters, especially if you're using things like a Wireshark or something like that, and you're ingesting huge amounts of traffic so that you can go back and do analysis and automated sometimes while you're capturing, you're, you're writing the file out and then reading the file at the same time. Uh, it, it will it just choke on it. So I do recommend uh, Backbox. So Backbox it's another Linux-based uh, packaged pen testing tool. And it uh, doesn't have, it, it's pretty light. It, it's kind of like the difference between, say, Ubuntu and Mint, if you're a Linux person, right? So Mint, I mean, you can run Mint on probably 2 gig hard drive. I mean, uh, whereas, you know, Ubuntu is going to take a lot more than that. Um, but yeah, it's got a lot of the same baseline tools like Nmap and Wireshark and things of that nature. Uh, I don't think it has an SDR. Um, once again, you can load those packages. Uh, if, if you are using Kali, 
I highly recommend you go out to their page. The, the beauty thing about, our beautiful thing about Cali is there's a large um, uh, community that supports it. So they have their own people that support it. They, they come out with like a pen testing with Cali, all these different kind of books. They have online resources. Uh, one of the best resources I've ever seen, uh, Wild West Hacking Fest, I actually sat through Johnny Long's class on Cali Dojo. So they actually teach you, and you can get this from their resources online, how to build your own uh, Cali system with whatever tools you want on it. So you can completely configure Cali, and you can have it replicate across machines. You can have all kinds of things happen with it. So it's great. So you'd like build one gold image that you want, just put it on all your team's machines. Pretty cool. Uh, any questions so far? All right. Going a lot faster than I thought I would. My original presentation, where I had actual, instead of just quotes from the movies, I had video snippets from the movies. Whenever I ran through it last Friday, it was an hour and 45 minutes long, and like an hour of that was video. And my brother-in-law that's a lawyer is like, you know, I think you've kind of kind of gone past the fair use uh, doctrine here. So uh, as your legal counsel, I recommend that you not give this presentation, especially if it's being recorded. Um, so how many people are either participating in the CTF or plan on doing something tomorrow? All right. So the first thing I'll tell you is this. This CTF, there's no physical security flags. Um, so you will need some type of computing device. Make sure that whenever you go in there, you ask about the rules. Uh, this one seems a little both fun and can be very annoying because one of the things they're allowing you to do is as you get flags, they're converting that to money like they're on little Bitcoin on their internet, right? And uh, once you get a certain amount, I think it's like 3,000 credits, yeah, you can SWAT people. So if you can figure out the other team's information, you can pay to have them SWATted so they get dosed or arrested. Uh, so they have to get off the network for a period of time. That's kind of a cool concept. But if you're starting tomorrow, there might be some people that might just SWAT you guys because they've been building up flags. Is there? Oh. Oh, yeah, because... So all the zero flags or the first level flags are new, but and I think the level one flags are new. Okay, okay. Yeah, but they said they're going to start adding more flags because people can't get past the first level. So uh, unfortunately, I think some of the things they've introduced are the ones from last year and two years ago. So yeah. It's the same exact one. Okay, okay. Um, so one of the first things they'll have you do is uh, just go to their website and you'll register a team name. Every CTF I've ever been to is run the same way. They'll have a, a team or they'll have a, a tracking page that shows you the points. And it's usually in real time or near real time. Uh, you'll have a lot. Of, the reason why I say near real time is you have a lot of people that are doing CTFs and they're either new at it and they think that that box is actually one of the boxes that's in play. Because I don't understand networking, or you know, sometimes, heck, I've been there at freaking 10 o'clock at night, exhausted from just staring at a screen all day, and I jump over, I I stop, you know, doing like a slash 24, and all of a sudden I'm, you know, scanning slash 20, and I don't even know where that is, right? And I'm like, oh crap, you know, I'm like, why am I getting 2,000 boxes? There should be five boxes on the network, and then you're just like, oh, cider notation, moron. Um, so you'll, you'll always register a team name, and then uh, if they have them, read the rules. So I've been to some where your very first flag, you get nothing except a network. And your very first flag is a text file that's the rules for the game. And if you violate the rules before you read the text flag, you actually get negative on your flags. So you could be like negative 400 before you capture your second flag. So those are kind of interesting. Um, never underestimate your ability to social engineer. There's going to be a lot of people in that room, and maybe not this one, but I've been somewhere, there's been 80, 90, 100 people in the room, and there's people walking through constantly. And I'll just get frustrated, 
I'll hear that maybe somebody's working on the same flag as me. I'll go take a break, have somebody watch my computer, go take a break, and then swing by that team's desk. Just listen in for a while. Hey, I've never done that before. What's that toy you're using? Oh, what IP address are you on? Oh, wow, that rocks. And then you've got a flag. They do all the work. Um, and unless that's, unless social engineering is specifically prohibited by the rules, it's fair game. Like I said, this is to help you build your skills so that maybe you could get that dream job you want at some point. Unless your dream job is GRC and then we need to talk because I can tell you for a fact, as much as I love policy, I'm sick of policy. Um, so here are the two takeaways, other than all my movie quotes and all those, those list of movies that you're all going to go out and watch, right? Especially if you were born in the 90s. I mean, that's, that's almost embarrassing. Have you guys, you guys look pretty young. Have y'all seen any of those movies? Some of them. Some of them? Okay. Um, I, I'd start with, I'd definitely start with Gotcha. I mean, that, that's just, it's a classic spy game. And uh, only he doesn't know he's a spy. He's, he's, yeah, it's great. Um, ah, well, yeah, one of my favorites. Probably watched that movie a couple of hundred times. Uh, anyway, so CTF Field Guide, this is really cool because they actually, it is a book that they've published at this website, and it will talk about some of the same things that I've talked about. Uh, they'll actually, um, they have some teaching resources where they'll teach you how to use different tools. Um, and then the second one, uh, Jordan, I don't know how to say his last name, Wines or Weens. I like his website, captf.com. And the reason is, is whenever he does an online capture the flag or whenever he does a capture the flag at a conference, he will actually write very detailed scripts on how he did it. Uh, not only that, but he actually has a list of websites that you can go out to. And he'll rank them, like if you're a beginner, um, start with these websites. If you're advanced, start with these websites. Um, if you've never used this tool before, go to this website and do this one. Right? Use Metasploitable. Um, Adrian, do you know, have you ever used the, I think it's called the really damn exploitable website or something like that? I don't think, uh, yeah. uh, it's another virtual machine that's a web server. Yeah. Uh, damn Vulnerable Web App. Damn Vulnerable Web App. That's it. Yeah, uh, my one and only foray using Burp Suite was against that, and um, I can't stand that tool. But anyway, it's it's corporate, it's huge, and I can't afford it. So there you go. Um, so like I said, my whole point for this was to tell you a story. Uh, hopefully, you enjoyed it. Uh, really everything that, that you could ever want is going to be on one of these two websites. And if you follow Jordan Wines, uh, he tweets about his CTF experience all the time. Uh, I don't think the guy actually has a job because he's constantly tweeting about it. Um, so are there any questions? Oh, by the way, no, 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 no. No, I forgot about this movie. So Gotcha is going to be the second movie you watch. The first movie is Real Genius. Have you seen Real Genius? It is absolutely, other than maybe The Saint, it is probably the best movie that Val Kilmer has ever been in. Um, I'm a big fan of The Saint, uh, but, uh, you know, Top Gun, hey, you know, he rocked it out of the park there. But his character in this show is the guy I grew up wanting to be, except I wasn't smart enough to be. So, you know, at some, whenever you watch the movie, at some point you're going to realize why I just said what I said. Because he's just, you know, you've got those people that are so smart, they just don't care. And they can be chill because they can have a job, you know, job at the drop of the hat. Uh, but, yeah. So he's like a Ph.D. student at age 19 or something like that. And they get a 17-year-old that comes in and beats them at all these different things. And, yeah, he retaliates the best way he knows how, which is practical jokes. Um so yeah, one of my favorite quotes from here, uh, Mitch, which is the young kid, 17-year-old high school student, comes in, helps with their PS, uh, PhD program, actually a weapons program. Um, he says, what are you doing? And Chris Knight, Val Kilmer, says, self-realization. I was thinking the immortal words of Socrates who said, I drink what? 
right? And I mean, that's probably, that's not even one of the best lines in there, but one of my favorite lines, and you'll, you guys, you'll see this if you watch the movie. Uh, I'm glad that it really worked, but I hope it doesn't explode. So keep that in mind. All right, questions, comments? Cool. Thanks a lot, guys. Oh! I do have one more thing. Uh, I am teaching a, my, my other actual passion, a uh, handgun safety course. Uh, the NRA sponsored one. I'm an NRA uh, certified instructor. Uh, I teach three, four, four courses. This one I'm teaching for free here. And if you are from, let's see, uh, Pennsylvania, you don't need it. If you're from Virginia, uh, West Virginia, and you want reciprocity, because you don't have to do, in West Virginia, you don't have to take a class now. You don't even need a license to open carry or conceal carry if you're over the age of 21. Um, but if you want reciprocity in other states, you need one. Uh, and let's say it's not Ohio, I think Georgia. And somebody asked me about Alabama earlier. Uh, it counts for Alabama. Indiana so. counts in both Ohio, Kentucky, and West Virginia. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah, so free training. Uh, it takes one hour, and then I'll give you guys a uh, notarized form that says you took a NRA uh, class from a certified instructor. I'll put my number on there, and it's free. So, All right, cool. Now, thanks. It's 7 o'clock.